Uh, welcome back to your number one breakfast show news hub. And today it's uh, health. We talk about health every Tuesday with the wonderful multi decade <laughs> public health physician, <laughs> Dr. Leo Roberts. Always a pleasure to have you here. Oh, it's always a pleasure to be here. I really look forward to the way you people <laughs> make me, you just set my week off on a good foot. Absolutely. We're going to have gongs here very soon. You know, like the gongs that they play. Oh, they were like a tolling bell that was played during for the Queen. No, 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 please. <laughs> no, please. And uh, let me just throw out a sneak peek of something coming up very soon. Yeah. Very soon on this frequency, on this channel, you'll be able to ask the doctor anything that's happening to you. And then Rob <laughs> might they refer you to where you should go. The kind of services I get, you mm. know, because... <laughs> of my relationship with Dr. Larry Roberts. <laughs> oh, wait, just a little bit, just, a, just let's just let it out a little bit. Something, you know, brewing, something very fantastic brewing. And I'm excited about Thank that. You. Thank you. Thank you. I am too. I am very excited. At them. All right, so uh, everybody's going to play what I play with you all the time this morning because we'll be discussing patient safety, world patient safety. Uh, which many people will be hearing for the first time because some people didn't even know uh, that there is, this is uh, commemorated yearly. Uh, that's been set aside by WHO. So when we say patient safety, it easily can be translated into let me be safe. But then medically, how does this really um, connect the medicine, the patient and the caregivers? It's actually a, fa a very... Why I'm wondering whether we'll have enough time this morning to plumb <laughs> the depths of it. Because when mm. we're talking patient safety, and it's actually a WHO Global Health Day, one of the days, Saturday, 17 September, and we're talking mm. about this year's theme is medication without harm. Harm. Mm. You know, and you are thinking medication, harm. Everybody seems to forget that f drugs are not food. Mm. Every drug has the capacity to cause harm. Some have the capacity to cause harm even when being used correctly. Mm. Talk less of the myriads of drugs that are being used inappropriately and incorrectly and the harm that they can cause. Drugs are chemicals. They are you know, designed to do something specific in the human body over a short period of time. Correct something and then be taken out of the way. And ideally, you know me, I'm a public health physician, so I will always go back to basics. Mm -hmm. Ideally, we should be able to maintain our health and, and well-being through our diets and lifestyle. Mm -hmm. However, there are times when you do need drugs. You have an incident, like you happened at the airport yesterday, you've got a flight to catch. Students have blocked the road. You're going to get a headache. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You, are, <laughs> you are going to get a headache. Your blood pressure may even go up a little bit. You mm. will need some medication for that very short period of time to bring to things back you. to normal. But then what we are finding is that when we look, I looked at the um, WHO strategy. First of all, this is the third year running. It has been since 2019. And they've actually been able to delineate the domains and the key action areas that we need to look at. And of course, you can trust me, public health physician, Several, what do you call it? Several, Several decades, decades of experience. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to hone in on my lane. Mm. Public safety. Keeping the patients and their families safe. How do we do that? That was actually item three of the agenda. Empowering the patients and their family to be able to be safe while being given medication. Mm. You know, so these are areas that when you really think about it, it, should, it has to concern everybody mm -hmm. and not just on the 17th of September, mm -hmm. all year round. It has to concern everybody. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I saw a, a video on social media where yeah. they were, you know, the, <laughs> the young lady coincidentally was trying to out fake tetracycline. Ooh. Ooh. But in doing so, actually outed herself for inappropriate use. And I sat there in shock that does this poor young lady have any idea of the danger she's in and the danger she's putting her unborn children in through this inappropriate use of tetracycline. Hmm. You know? So I, 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 I want us to really be able to educate the public and educate yeah. families on 
Yes, medication I, safety. Sorry, Dr. Robots, but yeah. the, the production tell, uh, crew tells me that they have the video up. Oh, okay, they so, do? Let's, yeah, let's so, so maybe we have a look at it. And it then, remind uh, a few people, yes. Yes, you know. So let's, let's see if we can uh, have the video up and then... Um, all right, so it's an amateur footage. I so opened the, um, on the, screen. the tetracycline and that's, poured that's, it in that's the that's container. Chemist, and right? what I perceived immediately was like spice. So I'm like, ah, is this how they do tetracycline now? Let's confirm something. Bring it, let me show you. Open one up. Boy, don't worry, I'll pay for it. I just want you to know so you know where you buy your medications from. Is that the color of tetracycline? Have you perceived it? Mm. It's like spice. Mm -hmm. So this was the company you gave me, right? Mm. Nap, nap, is it Naptrine or Naptene or whatever? Mm. Tetracycline. Okay, open another one. Let's see. This is the correct one. I think you've seen the difference. Mm. I've helped you to know. So someone don't buy tabs from your uh, chemist and go and fall sick. Okay. My husband has told me of how someone drank tetracycline and it affected the liver and the person died. I was asked to take it for these people on my face. And when I started, that one I didn't buy it, someone gave me from a different pharmacy on Maya. When I started drinking that, I started feeling like congestion around my chest. Mm -hmm. And I stopped taking it. I don't know why I just stopped. My spirit just said, stop taking it so and i've met all these just a normal person i've met like two of them they said i should rather take tetracycline and mix with palm oil and apply it on my face so that one said use it with honey and apply it on your face than drinking mm -hmm. that's why i came to buy from you but when i opened it perceive it now it smells like spice like real spice Several things wrong with this <laughs> video, right? So help, help oh us, my goodness. Help us let's, let's, let's try and unpack it slowly. Yes, please. So, so first of all, of course, there is the issue of number one. She walks into a shop, asks for a prescription-only medication, and is given it. No prescription. Okay, put that to one side. Hmm. Of course, she's opening it and demonstrating that there's a, a, a fraud involved. There's a fake and there's a real. But the, then the next question comes, why is she opening it at all? Good thing, bad thing. Why is she opening it up? Somebody, and she says, an ordinary person told me that rather than drinking tetracycline for the pimples of my face, I should open it, mix it in palm oil, and put it on my face. Wow. Hmm. Really? So wow. I watched the thing. Then, you know me, I said, ah, don't be judgmental. I went back to my pharmacology textbooks. I called friends of mine, very well-read, erudite, well pharmacists mm. top of the game one is a phd so she's actually doctor and i asked please joe I, you know it's a long since i read this thing in medical school educate me where is it acceptable to open a capsule of, parasit uh, of uh, tetracycline mix it and apply it as a topical application to the she says nowhere Tetracycline is a prescription-only medication. What was it prescribed for? I said, therein lies the problem. It was never prescribed. Mm. So if anything should happen to this young lady, and she, by her own confession, said that she had taken it and had congestion in her chest, and her spirit told her to stop. Mm. Her spirit told her to stop is fantastic, but who prescribed it for you, ab initio? For what purposes? What information was given to you? Were you told what you can, when to take it, before or after meals? Were you told what to eat within an hour of taking it? And all those patient information leaflets that we give, which are actually even inside the packaging that nobody reads, clearly. Mm -hmm. Clearly. Clearly. <laughs> <laughs> and where is it ever acceptable to make, and if you went the video, she admits to mixing it with honey and applying it on her face, for pimples. Wow. Wow. As in wow. And she's being given this information by her own admission, ordinary person. So clearly, she admits that the person who giving her this information is not a healthcare provider. And, and that makes it so hard for a lot of people who, uh, I would tell you, just as you'd say on the program in, in a couple of times, um, would say I've not been to the hospital in years. 
uh, I don't have any business going to the hospital. Uh, meanwhile, maybe at different times they might have experienced some level of headaches or pains or something. So they would assume that they could always go over the counter to get some paracetamol or some others to help them to maintain, uh, to keep them in good health. So how, what actually, when we say medicine safety, what does it mean? Good question. First of all, we need to be able to differentiate between the medications we call over-the-counter or OTCs. Mm. So something like paracetamol, aspirin, you know, some cough medications are over-the-counter. You can literally go. My advice, always speak to the pharmacist, not the person behind the desk. And I'll tell you an, uh, an, an experience I had if we have time. Then we need to separate them from the prescription-only medications. Now, these prescription-only medications, funnily enough, are on a list of what we call the high-risk, high-alert medications. And these are medications that, even when used correctly, mm -hmm. have potential to cause harm. So they really must be used under supervision Stupation. of mm. a healthcare provider. Mm. Okay? And you know what? A is for antimicrobials, of which tetracycline is one. Mm. First on the list, antimicrobials. Also on that list, potassium, you know, or, or any injectable potassium. Also on that list, insulin. Mm -hmm. Now bear in mind that as a West African nation of black people, we have very high rates of hypertension and diabetes. Right. So these are drugs that are needed in the management of these diseases. Mm -hmm. But what you have is that you have people taking them as mm -hmm. what would like supplements. <laughs> Now, I, I remember a very sad case we were dealing with in the hospital. You know, the family had now lodged a complaint against the care that their loved one was getting, and the doctors are not playing their part, and the nurses are not playing their part, and yada, 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 yada. When we drilled down into the situation, the gentleman in question was in chronic renal failure, known uh, hypertensive for many years, mm -hmm. and obviously had been a bit lackadaisical about his medication, but had gone into chronic renal failure. But I had to ask the physicians, and I said, look, it's long since I've been in medical school. I don't remember. Mm -hmm. Really, I know the link between diabetes and chronic renal failure, but is the link between hypertension and chronic renal failure that strong that this man, even after, should have... Well, it's supposed in some case... Do you know what it turned out? The gentleman in question pops two tablets of paracetamol every two or three hours during the day. Wow. As a supplement. For what? For what? Totally oblivious to the fact that paracetamol in and of itself damages the liver and the kidney. It does. By itself. If, I, if you read the patient leaflets, and I'm going to ask you pop quiz next week when I come. Mm. Go and read the patient leaflet of paracetamol that and we buy all the time that we buy all the time and they state it very clearly mm. in a 24 hour period you must not yeah. take more than eight tablets mm. if the pain is so severe that you need it more frequently than once in four hours a dose in four hours go and see a healthcare provider and that is an otc that's an over-the-counter drug that is common or garden paracetamol. Mm. Mm. Or if you're an American, acetaminophen. Mm. They are one and the same. Mm. And it is there, clearly, bold, in the patient, in the uh, information leaflet in the package that nobody reads. Now, now that you mentioned it, which is fantastic, we're having the world patient safety. I mean, if you cannot read that, go get a glasses so that you can read the text because it's but too it small. Very, you I know, have my glasses. I, I read everything now. Because illegible. The side effects, I, I understand also from, from oh, this, is also a major oh, problem. Uh, I, was, I, go, go. I know waste money on your school fees. <laughs> <laughs> I know waste my money. I don't know what the medical term is called now, but they, like you mentioned, uh, there's a possibility people are taking several drugs at the same time. Don't even know the contraindications. Thank you very and much. The side effects. This how, is how serious is this problem? Very, very serious. In fact, it is number two. Hmm. The second objective of the World Patient Day 2022. Yeah. Hmm. Patient safety through the area of concern is what we call polypharmacy. Hmm. <clears throat> That's the medical, Good. the polypharmacy. scientific polypharmacy. Hmm. And polypharmacy is 
you can think of it as, oh, you went to the doctor, you, com you complain that you are just not feeling well, you have a bit of a fever, yada, 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 yada. And the next thing you know, you're coming out with a long prescription of drugs, about 10 or 12 or 14 drugs. That's one side of it. And mm. many a time you find that when you go to, please forgive me all my friends in private practice, they need to like justify their bill mm. by giving you this long list of drugs. But that is the good side of it, if, if anything good can be called. Yeah. What we have is a situation where there are so many people who have what we call comorbidities. So look at somebody like me. At my age, I'm going to have arthritic pain. I'm probably diabetic, probably have hypertension. And then I may have to be dealing with some infective disorder. Mm -hmm. So I go to the doctor and I say, oh, I'm running a fever. I've got some defective disorder going on. What's wrong with me? And my tummy hurts. And, oh, yes, by the way, my stools have been very black and my, you know, I'm passing blood in my urine, you know. Mm -hmm. And, of course, if the doctor doesn't specifically ask me, I forget to tell him, I will not tell him. It doesn't occur to me, I'm a layman, mm -hmm. to mention that, oh, by the way, I'm on this drug and this drug and this drug for the diabetes, for the hypertension, for the arthritis. In fact, for the arthritis, I'm taking a drug for the arthritis, probably something like uh, diclofenac, but every time I'm in pain, I'm adding aspirin to it. Mm. Now, diclofenac and aspirin are from the same group of drugs, mm -hmm. which means I'm double dosing on that group of drugs as a layman. Because mm. as far as I am concerned, this drug is for my arthritis in my knees, but this drug is because I have a headache. Mm. You brought bazookas to oh. fight. Uh, I say intercontinental <laughs> ballistic <laughs> missile <laughs> to kill mosquitoes. <laughs> Oh and this is the aspect. And now I have not added to it all the complementary supplements that I may be taking. Because, you know, my friend is a complementary and alternative medicine practitioner. And he or she says, oh, but this is very good for your menopausal symptoms. Mm -hmm. So I'm taking St. John's liver water and I'm taking uh, evening primrose oil and I'm taking... Hmm. All these things will interact very rarely for good. Most mm. and generally for bad. Mm. But I'm thinking, no, this is the doctor I came to see because I'm running a fever. So I'm going to tell her what, for not mentioning that, oh, I'm seeing this doctor for arthritis in the knee, mm -hmm. and I'm seeing that doctor because I'm diabetic, and oh, that doctor because mm -hmm. that's polypharmacy. And a lot of us, a lot of people are in Sounds that situation because, you know, somehow we've compartmentalized the body, hmm. forgetting that God made it one. Mm. All right, so, so what are now the key elements of patient safety? If we've been able to discover all of these, what are those things that the patient must put into consideration and how can health officials also help in that regard? We are particularly concerned, and let me bring out the, the, the aspect, we're particularly, I am, and public health physicians and the Association of Public Health Physicians of Nigeria, patients and the public, that is our domain. It is one of the four domains, and the key action areas are high-risk situations, transitions of care, and polypharmacy. Educating people to ask, to know, to read, to find out. Educating people on the aspects of medication safety. I had an interesting interaction with the patient the other day, and her... <clears throat> One of her test results shows that her, she's diabetic. She didn't know that before. Mm. And I said, well, I should put you on anti-diabetic medication. Oh, but doctor, is it so high that I can't manage it with diet? And I said, yes. I mean, I said, let's consider that. So what, I, what she has done is she has made herself a co-partner with the healthcare provider oh, yeah. in her own health. Mm. She doesn't want another medication added to her already long list of medications. Mm. And she has a right to be concerned and a right to be. So she now educates herself and informs herself. And I said, please, if you're going to do that, let us be intentional about mm. your diet and lifestyle. And then we go into a whole discussion about that. Mm -hmm. So that is what empowering the patients and their families mm. means. It means that you are now engaging the person intentionally mm. to take control over certain areas. If we try that for two weeks, a month, and the parameters don't normalize, mm. then we scale up. Mm -hmm. But all, what is most important is that 
she's involved in her care. And if there are any adverse drug reactions, she knows she can reach me and she says, look, I started and this has happened and this has happened. Is it something we need to be concerned about? No. No. And I can either reassure her or say, oh, well, no, let us see over this. Another thing, you know, so that speaks to the engagement of patients and their families. And this is particularly important when you're looking at transitions of care. Yeah. Supposing she had been on admission, she's now going home. Okay, so while she's on admission, we may be in some control over the medications that she's taking. But as soon as she gets back into her home environment, yeah. she now is bringing her cod liver oil and her St. John's liver wort and her evening primrose oil and her this, that and the other. And oh, that agbo that grandma gave me and I've been taking ever since I was a child. Yes. So there again, we need to be concerned. And then more importantly, the public needs to be concerned. And here I am going to make a strong plug for what we call the antimicrobial stewardship. The public needs to be aware that indiscriminate use of antimicrobials, we're talking the antibiotics, we're talking the antimalarials, we're talking oh. the, yes, anything used to fight infection. Who's on this on the medicines? They are has good. been banned for 45 years hmm. in Nigeria. Where have you been? No, I'm just trying that for the That is the problem. Grandma is still stuck in the past. Hmm. So all the antimicrobials, of which antimalarials, antibiotics, mm -hmm. antileprotic drugs, anti-tuberculosis drugs, anti, are in, are in, we must safeguard their use. You have a right to ask your doctor, doctor, I'm coughing, I'm coughing, and the next thing you see is an antibiotic on the prescription. Do I really need this antibiotic, doctor? Mm -hmm. But then you see, the doctors often are prescribing under pressure from the patient. Wait, ah, doctor, I said my daughter is coughing, and you didn't give her an antibiotic. Yeah. Then the patient may go and buy it for himself yeah. because it's available in Nigeria as an over-the-counter drug. Yeah. So public awareness is critical. The public need to be aware. We actually don't have anything left in our weapon, weaponry arsenal mm. for serious infections. So if we get those nasty flesh-eating infections, you will die. I don't care how much money you have, mm. and I don't care where you can fly to. Mm. You will die. In fact, I know two hospitals in the UK. They test you for those things first. They won't allow you through the door. Mm. Because they have no weapons to fight, to fight it. it. Mm. So don't come in. They don't want you to come in and infect any part of their hospital. Mm. I hear the goal, the goal is to reduce by at least 50%. Um, according to the World Health Organization, this whole thing. And then they say also to, um, it was an interesting, which, which relates with the video we watched um, in terms of reporting. Um, out of nearly 3,000 health practitioners who were surveyed in this country, less than 33%, 34% reported. The other 34% didn't think it was important enough for them to make uh, reports about this sort of things happen. But this lady in Advent, this vaccine video, uh, did a report, you know, but it's just that it was done in a wrong well, way. It, what, what I'm would you not say? sure that, I'm glad she did it. Yes. I'm mm -hmm. glad she did it because it gives us the opportunity. If you don't know what is going on, you can't correct certain things. Mm -hmm. So she did it to out the um, fake tetracycline. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. And people have to remember that, you know that um, barcode? Mm -hmm. If you buy a medication, scratch off the barcode, snap it, yeah. and check whether what you're getting is what should be. Mm. It means that the drugs you may be buying need to be a little bit more expensive than the cheap, fake variety out there. Mm. Please, go the extra mile for patient safety sake. So that's number one. But number two, I'm glad she did it because she's now revealed to me, at least, and to a lot of other healthcare providers, that there's still a lot of inappropriate use of drugs mm. and that is something that we need to correct that is something that we need to correct and sadly we now don't have enough personnel yeah. mm. so everybody needs to be on their guard everybody needs to become a policeman for their own medication safety mm. check what you are you're buying mm. if you don't need it don't take it if you don't need it don't take it Type does not permit us to go into what we call the Stephen Johnson syndrome, which is a horrible, horrible, horrible allergic reaction to sulfur-containing drugs that mm. a lot more people have than we know. 
How stressful. I was reading through for this uh, particular topic and I realized that there are some moments in um, patient in medication safety that uh, most patients don't know because we're not medical practitioners. We depend on caregivers to give us, you know, support in that direction. Sometimes you have it, uh, some people never finish through, they never go through the medication. I was like that for a very long time because we're like, okay, I'm well. Oh, I don't like this uh, drug. I, I, I really don't like it like that. So um, how do you talk to a patient whose medication always, always never finishes, she never finishes through his or medication? It's, uh, it's our responsibility as healthcare providers to give the patient that information. So we know, we are taught, nurses, doctors, pharmacists, we are taught that to emphasize the need for the patient to finish a course of antibiotics. My cousin calls me the other day and she's been given a course of antibiotics. Mm. And I said, well, make sure you finish it. Mm. Oh, she says, I always do. But on day three, I call her and I say, are you still on it and how are you feeling? She's much better. All the symptoms have disappeared. I said, but you are you have she to. Says, yes. Do I have to? I said, yes, you absolutely have to. And so I encouraged her to continue. Now, I could do this because she's family mm. and I care and I am, you know, involved. Obviously, can I do this to every single patient? No. But this is where the empowering patients and their families comes mm. into play because everybody will do it for themselves or their family member. Mm. And it's so important. The other thing is to give out all the information. You are right. Those information leaflets, the writing is so tiny, you are breaking your <laughs> eye to see. But your healthcare provider must tell you that, oh, this drug, it will make you, particularly there's a particular antibiotic sometimes we have to, 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 to prescribe. And I, I must tell, I said, look, left to me, oh, I so hate this antibiotic that when it's prescribed to me, I'm begging the doctors, isn't there anything else you can give me? Because mm. this is how it is going to make you feel. Mm. But you need to persevere through this because this is the outcome we're looking for. Mm. So that information... And that is what is, you know, we, we are concerned about in the patients and the public, in making sure we give them all the information and then allow ourselves to be available mm. for their questions. Mm. Maybe not yeah. at the point of prescription. Call me. If you have any concerns, call me. Send me a text. Send me a WhatsApp. Mm. Two, tomorrow, two days' time, three days' time. You have mm. any concerns, call me. Mm. Mm. And that's the reporting you are talking about. Pharmacovigilance is the right. term you're looking for. Right. I, I know errors also happen too. Um, you know, I've, I've heard people go, unfortunately, they want to go buy over the counter drug. They got the wrong name entirely and oh. they get there and they're, they're given something else. Uh, I know it also happens sometimes during procedures. Things also happen, we hear. Uh, unfortunately, sometimes it's fatal. Other times, you know, it could be remedied. But how, how serious is this? It is very, very serious. Mm. It is very, in fact, <laughs> so there are, so, there are online courses. Yeah. That, that, that we're encouraged to, to take on this, you know, the whole thing of getting into theatre and amputating the wrong leg or removing Oof. the wrong eye. You know, like you said, fatal errors. Mm. These are life-changing errors, you know, that cannot be undone. Mm. So that's the, that's the, that's the headline-catching news. Mm. But all the way down the spectrum to minor errors. Because once there's even a minor error, what it means is that there is potential for the error to have occurred. Mm. Something in the system lapsed. And you will find that systems and practices of medication is another whole domain mm. of this patient safety thing. Mm. So in examining even the minor errors, it, it must allow us to strengthen the system so that, I mean, in an ideal situation, you're dispensing insulin to a diabetic patient on the ward. Mm -hmm. Ideally, two highly trained nurses. One is looking at the prescription and checking the drug, handing it over to the other who checks the drug before administering. Oh, how I wish what luxuries exist. <laughs> mm. You know, so that every diabetic patient on the ward who needs insulin has the advantage of being cared for, having that level of supervision. No, what, what we have now is one highly trained nurse, absolutely fagged out, overworked, underpaid, managing an entire ward full of patients. There will be errors. There will be errors. The systems 
are failing. And that is why this year's theme is particularly concerned about the weak governance systems, the weakened health systems that we have in the low and middle income countries, mm. Nigeria being top of that list. Yeah. Yeah. Another mm. issue of concern would be storage. Thank you very much. And <laughs> because you'd gone to buy and they said this should be stored at so so temperature. Mm. And, and some people don't have... First of all, it was at room temperature in the chemistry. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it starts with, with that. Mm -hmm. And that could go even to vaccination, to drugs, over-the-counter, some others prescribed like that. So how do we handle this? Again, it's information and power. And you are very correct about that one, because yesterday I had to go and buy my father's eye drops. He has glaucoma. And I got to my trusted pharmacy. I wish I could mention the name, but I obviously will not. I got to my trusted pharm uh, pharmacy, and the lady asked me, Ma'am, do you need an ice bag for this? Hmm. Yes. And that's the confidence I have in that pharmacy. Oh. She immediately, because she's getting it, it needs to be stored at refrigerated temperature. temperature. Yeah. And she's going to restore it. She's now selling it to me or, or, you know, on a prescription, needless to say. Yeah. And how, how am I getting home? How long is it going to take me to get home? Do I need an ice bag? I mean, if I'm now going and it's going to take me two, three hours to get home. You get enough ice for you to gets, keep it. She's going to pack me a little ice bag. And giving me an ice bag is what? She had, they have um, pure water, sachet. Ice cubes, yeah. That's just stored in the freezer. She puts it in the, 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 the nylon bag for you with the drug. But you see, it was that knowledge... And that, and that care to ensure that they've gone to the trouble of storing it properly, mm -hmm. they're now selling it, there's no point it's getting back and becoming ineffective. Ma'am, do you mm -hmm. want a nice bag for this? Which you won't find along my... Well, <laughs> this is why you need to know where you're buying your oh, drugs. Dear. Okay. This is why, and that, and that responsibility is yours. Yes, I could have bought it anywhere. And, you know, some people will advise me, but Ma, this one, I can get it cheaper for you. No, this is my dad. These are his eyes. I care enough to go that extra little bit. It's not even an extra mile, maybe extra two yards. Another thing that we started to show with which I would like for us to dwell more on, on Bearing the fact that there is an agency of government that is saddled with that responsibility is the case of fake and adulterated drugs in the country. Uh, because we're talking about patient safety and I'm a layman. I don't know what is fake or what is original. I, we will hear that some of those highly rated pharmacies do sell some of these uh, products that are adulterated or fake entirely. So uh, this puts the patient in a very precarious situation. Again, what are we coming back to? Education. If you are not sure, ask. And if anything happens, at least be brave like that young girl. Yeah. And report it. And report it. Now we all know the name of the company or the brand that don't buy that drug. Mm. And anything else they produce, don't buy. What if it was actually adulterated? What if the company in question actually produces very good quality drugs? But some people had gone it behind all the time. to adulterate it. Do you remember that ty the, the Tylenol disaster in the US? Yeah. Oh, time? the Tylenol, yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. And what did Tylenol have to do? The company, that, you know, Tylenol is the brand name, clearly. Yeah. So yes. I, I, have, I have to mention it. Mm -hmm. You know, they come and see the layers of security and safety they now put on their drugs. And the warning, do not buy, do not use if the seal so is broken. Or this is broken. Okay. It will happen. Evil is as evil does. It will happen. So you've got to, even when you're buying medication, and let's be honest, even food, yeah. which is why me, I buy the one that I see open in the market. <laughs> you understand? <laughs> Everything, there's potential for fraud. Everything. You're buying a tin of milk. Do you know what they have put inside and how they've resealed it? Mm -hmm to sell as milk, what is maybe just chalk and water. Do you understand? Oh, Powder milk, everything. Everywhere there is potential for fraud. So it is, the onus is on you, the user, yeah. to ensure the quality of what, what you're buying. Okay. So if there are places where you've been defrauded once, you don't go back there again. Yeah. And please, be your brother's keeper. Out it. Mm. Tell mm. people. Mm. I bought something online and what I got wasn't what I ordered. 
the scathing customer review I gave immediately and photographed what I ordered and what I got, they were practically at my door with all the mm -hmm. delivery people. Wait, Madame Ejo. <laughs> yes, and, and I think it's fantastic that we have this sort of discussions. I mean, the viewers can, which is with the media, also a very important part uh, of this Definitely. Um, chain, you know. So we, we look at things, for example, like uh, uh, best before date, expiry date. You know, people don't take notice of these things. Oh, I mean, my yeah. wife was in the shopping mall the other day and was uh, going to, and so buy one, get three, or get two free. And, <laughs> and an elder, older lady walk, walked off to her and told her, check the expiry date. And she hmm. checked and realized it was going to expire in two weeks from yes. that date. You know, other than I hear that, you know, maybe a month afterward. But at least the, just the knowledge to know that this is going to expire. Yes. Uh, so you check the expiry date. <laughs> uh -huh. Fine. If you decide that, oh, but I'm having a party and I'm going to consume everything within the next two days. Yes. I would go ahead, uh, oh, but yeah, go ahead and buy. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh -huh. Thank you, you for saying that. that. Because sometimes if I yeah. see something like a shelf life of maybe remaining even three months, I'll run away six months, I won't buy. Because I feel that maybe in this part of the world, we've had instances where even those, that time that they say it's, it's going to be the expiry date, it had expired even way <laughs> again before it, that time. Yes. So, so if you go I into incredible places, non credible places, I won't buy. Mm. But any shop, and let's talk about the supermarkets here, any supermarket that says buy one, get three free. Chances are they're already expecting you to check the expiry date. Mm. Mm. And they probably won't put it up there because one is expiring next week, one in one month, one in three weeks. So there's no point trying to print all the expiry mm. dates. The onus is on you. This is free. There's nothing free in mm. Freetown. You check the expiry <laughs> date. And then take an what we call an informed decision. You take an informed decision. So if we know it's something you're going to, you know, uh, the family is coming around. We're going to finish using this thing in the next one week. No problem. Thank you it so just much. Sa it saves you a lot of money. Yeah. Dr. Alo Roberts, it's always a pleasure <laughs> to have you on News Hub to really enlighten our view and myself most of the times on the things that had been, in, you know, shooted sometimes in secrecy, some others due to the fact that we don't pay attention to them. Thank you so much, Dr. Alo Roberts. Public Thank health you so much for putting up with me every week. Several decades. <laughs> Thank you so much for being part of the program. And let me remind you also that something is in the pot cooking on fire to be served hot, crispy, and beautifully very soon. I'm coming from Dr. Alera Roberts. Can't wait to see you. Thank you. All right. You're still watching this help. Let's take a very short break. Another conversation will start here in just a moment. Do stay with us. <laughs>